Welcome back guys. I've got another video for you. I'm going to show you one of the boxes that I built so I could test my train equipment. Uh, what it is is basically a resistive circuit that trains cells, which uh, I believe is pretty expensive. I built this thing for probably less than 20 bucks. Uh, I'm going to show you what I did, how I built it, and kind of give you guys some ideas on what you could do to build your own. I'm not necessarily going to list every little part number or anything like that. You'll have to do a little research, but the plan on how I laid it out and stuff usually is enough for most people out there to get things put together and get started on it. So let's take a look and see what I got. This is my first box I built uh, originally. And when I did it, I decided I was gonna use a three position switch. Essentially, it's a single pull double throw switch where I would make my center a off position and then up was gonna be a closed position. And then going all the way down was going to be the resistive circuit for whatever mode that you wanted to be in. I also added a three amp resettable breaker so that if anything would go wrong, it would be protected. Now, the only thing I didn't like about the way I ended up doing it, and just like anything, you start learning real quick what your mistakes are once you start using it. I like my jumper short so that I'm not uh, getting it caught on things. But what I ended up doing was we went uh, through here. As you can imagine, the red one is my R or my common wire. And then I labeled each one of them with a paint marker. Now, I don't use this box anymore. Uh, I ended up developing a new one. Now the one that I use now is this one here. This is a lot larger than what the other one is. I added a magnet on the back. So what I'll do is I'll just stick it on the side of the unit, that way I don't lose it. And then I'll go ahead and set it for what mode I need. Uh, this is kind of generic. I went ahead and just set it so that whatever position I need or whatever mode I need, I can flip it to it and be done. On the side here, you can see enthalpy. Enthalpy is a resistor circuit that allows you to unplug the enthalpy control outside if you have that. Some economizers are gonna be using just a standard temperature control to put it into a yes or no situation, open or closed. But if you have a little bit nicer one where you have enthalpy control, this is going to allow you to test it on the warm days when you're not going to normally need the economizer. This center conductor here is your common. All these around the outside are gonna be where you hook your resistors to it. This switch I think I picked up on uh, either Amazon or eBay. Let's go ahead and tear this thing apart and take a look inside and see what we did. Okay, as you can see, nothing special on this. It's just a magnet that allowed me to uh, stick it on the side of the unit so I don't have to mess with it. And on the inside, there's not a whole lot to this thing. As you can see, I added some dielectric grease to it to keep it from having any issues, made it a lot easier to turn. And then I went through and picked the resistors that I needed for the circuit, depending on what it was. All of them basically are going to be tied together, just like you see here. I had a couple of them that I needed a higher resistor. So what I end up doing is put a couple of them in series. But as you can see, we ended up putting some strain relief here on the uh, coil here. That way, if you pull on it, it's not gonna pull through the box. Nothing real fancy, guys, but, uh, and then we just took, uh, this was a uh, meter lead that I had left over that wasn't any good anymore. These are the Mueller uh, Gator Clips, which are one of the better brands out there. And then we actually soldered in the position there. So you've got a real good connection that you're not going to be able to pull apart. And you can pick up these gators here. You can get uh, the Mueller online on eBay, or you can go to your local Lowe's, Menards, uh, Home Depot, whatever, and pick up some of these GBs. Um, there's the UPC symbol on it, so you can look that up. But, uh, you know, these are about a dollar, I think, or maybe $2 max. And these are what I use for my jumpers. So what I'll do is I'll buy two of them. I'll make a jumper that uses the same color on each side. As you can see down here, this is the larger resistor. I put some heat shrink tubing on it and just did some twists and soldered it together. Um, and then uh, same thing here. I brought these all together and was able to uh, solder them all here. And then uh, that's the way it terminated. But as you can see, this box is a lot larger than what it needed to be. It would have been nice if I could have found one that was as wide this way and the other way, and I could have only made it about that big. But I didn't see any. I didn't look super hard, but I did look around a little bit. But as you can see, these boxes are project boxes. You can pick them up online. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this other one, and we'll go ahead and get those resistances. This is the uh, resistances for the most common ones out there. 
If you're GYWs, economizer, reheat, I built this thing obviously a couple years ago, but uh, those are your resistances right there. You can always pause it, look at it. A screenshot from the factory. Uh, you can see it on any train unit. I'm not, uh, we're not a train dealer, so I don't work on a bunch of them, but the one I do, this makes the testing procedure so much easier. Uh, generally with this circuit here, um, you will uh, just need to tap it one time and you can remove it from the circuit and then you'll be able to uh, let the unit run. But you can leave it in the circuit, but it's not necessary to keep it in there. As you can see on this one here, I basically drilled a hole in the side of it, put a rubber grommet on it, put a wire tie there so it couldn't be pulled the one direction and then ran it on through into the uh, breaker, out of the breaker, came through and hit the center conductor of all those single pull double throw switches. When I flipped it down, which kicks the bottom plate forward, that's gonna put you from common to the wire, which is gonna be a dry contact. And then when you'd flip it the other way, it's gonna take it from R down to the resistor and then out on the O. Uh, just like with anything, uh, power goes to the shortest path of resistance. So with that resistor being on there, it would have absolutely no effect on it at all. Obviously, I had to add a couple resistors there for the economizer circuit, which I think is what that one is. And then uh, you got to be really careful when you're soldering little switches like this, which was one of the other reasons why I didn't like that. I have a Heiko soldering station here. With this thing here, this is about a hundred or more dollars. I, you don't have to have something like that. But uh, you can sit there and set it for whatever temperature you want. So if you're going to be doing some uh, fancy soldering, uh, this is definitely a nice one to do it. It's temperature regulated, um, but you don't have to have nothing quite that nice. One of the important things, as always, is making sure that your tip is tinned and is clean. And using some really good solder, which I use some really thin stuff, which is really nice. This one here was made by Loctite. The diameter on it's 0.5 millimeter. Um, this is some really good stuff. It's uh, got the flux built into it, but I still like to use my flux pin. What I'll do when I'm going to uh, do some soldering so I can get on and off of it as quickly as possible, uh, not only do I have the heat turned down around 650-ish area, but I will pre tin my wires and then I'll same thing with my connections and I'll go ahead and flux them ahead of time because with these little micro switches, as you can see, I made the mistake and I burnt these two up. This was before I got the nice uh, Heiko there. I was just using a 30 watt pencil uh, soldering gun, which, uh, you know, I use, I usually keep one of those on my truck for emergency repairs and things like that. What I'll do is I'll tin those and then I'll go ahead and just uh, reheat it once I get it to it. And that just seems to make a real fast connection, really simple. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot to these things, and I believe these sell for over $200. I've got nickels and dimes in the resistors. The switches here were pretty expensive. I think these might have been somewhere around $2 a piece. I don't remember, but I know this one here definitely wasn't, and this is the way I would definitely go because it gives you 12 positions, and uh, it's just more flexible because you're only gonna do one thing at a time anyhow when you're talking the resistive switches. Uh, this here, uh, with, it, with it being the way it is, generally when you'd move it, you'd pull it off of the uh, terminals. So I really don't like this one near as much, but I was planning on salvaging it and uh, using it for like my geothermal testing, water furnace, stuff like that. All right, guys, I want to thank you for stopping by and taking the time to watch the video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Check the links out down below, and while you're down there, make sure you leave a comment of any ideas you have for my next video. I would like to maybe do autopsies on equipment that has failed so we can figure out why it failed, along with other tips, tricks, tools, reviews, helpful hints on getting a job, what to do, what to look for, how to be successful in the field, and things that just make you a better technician. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. All right, we're going to go ahead and go through the resistances that uh, are on this box here. The enthalpy comes in at 1200 ohms. There's going to be a little bit of a variance on the resistance because of the accuracy of the resistor is going to vary possibly anywhere from 1 to 20% depending on what kind of resistor it is. Emergency heat's going to come in at 47,000 ohms. 
dehum, dehumidification, or defrost, depending on whether you're working on what type of unit, is coming in at 33,000. W4 is coming in at 27,000 ohms. W3 is at 22,000 ohms. W2 comes in at, comes in at 15,000 ohms. W1 comes in at 10,000 ohms. Y3 comes in at 8,000. Y2 comes in at 6,800. Y1 comes in at 4,600 ohms. The economizer comes in at 3,300. And a G signal or just fan only comes in at 2,200. The economizer, what it'll do is it'll just force it open. Now you can always go ahead and cycle it from the test terminals, short them together, and if you leave it on there, I believe it'll just cycle one to the next, to the next, to the next. Train is not our primary brand that we work on. I just have, uh, you know, basic knowledge of them and how to make them run and how to adjust them. Nowhere near the uh, familiarity of what I do towards, say, a Linux or a carrier. There you go. That's the resistance of the box that I have.